Huh? Seems like we were just sent a strange book. It does have a really nice cover, though. Oh, Paimon's really curious. Let's read it and see what it's about. You're still here. If Paimon woke up alone, she probably would be trembling in a tree hollow. Well, let's follow this path for now. We might be able to meet someone and figure out what this place is all about. Look weird to you. It almost looked like they were made of paper. Uh, and those two frogs over there? Yeah, they look like pieces of origami. Oh, by the shade of a lotus leaf stream, don't tell me you forgot how to jump. I, I didn't forget, Firecracker. I'm just not sure if what I remember is correct. <laughs> Next thing you know, you'll have forgotten how to sing, much less notate a score. You still remember why we call you Stream, don't you? Yeah, because I've got a great singing voice. Although these days, the name seems more ironic than anything. Not just a great voice, one that evokes the gentleness of early morning dewdrops flowing into a spring. So cheer up and make the jump over. If you're still unsure, just use that roll of magic thread. I won't laugh, I promise. Now, don't tell me you've forgotten how to use that as well. I haven't forgotten everything, Firecracker. Your name, for instance. It's kind of hard to forget that you're named after your fiery temper. Now do me a favor and pipe down for a second. I'll be right over. <laughs> you saw that too, right? Paimon's not seeing things, is she? <laughs> this place is getting more confusing by the second. Anyway, uh... Why don't we go after those two frogs? They didn't look evil or anything. Plus, they might be able to help us out. <laughs> Quit following me. Huh. The wind rises. Huh. Guess we're not catching up to those frogs. They were so fast. Paimon couldn't even tell where they hopped off to in the end. Uh, excuse me, honored travelers. Did you come from the Cliff of Prophecy, perchance? Chubby Paper Hamster just talked! Chubby? Who are you calling Chubby? She's got a slightly thicker layer of paper on me, that's all. <clears throat> Allow me to uh, introduce myself. Uh, my name is Armand, and I'm an elder of the Forest of Blessings. Uh, I've been waiting here for the Hero of Prophecy to arrive. <laughs> Traveler, could you pinch Paimon just to make sure she's not still dreaming? Oh, pinching, you say? Well, I can help with that. Although you'll have to get a little closer. My arms are rather short. Ah, uh, that's all right. We just need a minute to collect ourselves. Okay. 
Okay, let's think things through. <laughs> we know for sure this isn't the world we're familiar with. The talking paper animals and all the paper trees and plants make that pretty clear. The hero from another world, supported by their companions, shall restore peace to the world. That is what the prophecy says. <laughs> Deary me, I, I completely forgot to introduce you to this world, didn't I? <sighs> and here I am, getting all excited by the arrival of the hero. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me, this old brain isn't what it once was. All shell and no nut. <sighs> oh well, perhaps my once glossy paper has faded past the point of no return. It's okay, really! You can just tell us all about this world now. Ah, let me think. Hmm, where, where should I even begin? Pretty much forgotten everything that happened in the past. Uh, right. I, I believe the story circulating along the pulp of this forest goes as follows. A, a long, long time ago, three goddesses created this world and named it Simulanka. The goddess of creation, who presides over matter and magic, created the mountains and rivers and gave us life. Her powers also paved the way for Simulanka to exist in numerous worlds. After the goddess of creation came the goddess of prophecy, with dominion over the stars and the course of fate itself. She induced the sky to spin and the earth to move. Even to this day, her, her statue still stands tall at the highest point of Constellation Metropole. The final goddess was the Goddess of Fate, she who reigns over all treasured tales and dearest wishes. She bestowed upon us the fierce and everlasting feelings of love and hate, and showed us the meaning of death and hope. Wow! They all seem super impressive. Sounds like they really did a lot. Uh, of course. The all new residents of Simulanka come to the forest to thank the goddess of creation for founding this world and travel to Constellation Metropole to witness the divinations of the goddess of prophecy's numerous oracles. After that, they make their way to the end of the world and tell the goddess of fate about their most cherished dreams. <sighs> well, at least that's how it used to be. Uh, how it used to be? Did something bad happen? Oh, yeah. That has to do with the hero you're waiting for, right? Yes, yes this old, old brain of mine may have forgotten many things, but I will never forget the day the evil dragon descended upon our forest. It came down from the skies in an ominous black mist and ravaged our homeland. Its gigantic footprints can still be seen in the kingdom of breezes and bells. We're incredibly fortunate that no one was hurt. Sounds terrifying! The terror doesn't stop there, I'm afraid. Ever since the attack, the calligraphy tavern in the forest has been closed. No one knows why, but it's a catastrophe of the highest order for us, forest dwellers. Uh, a catastrophe of the highest order? All because a tavern closed? If we were talking about Mondstadt here, Paima might understand, but is it really all that serious? Good goddess of creation above, we'd take even the greatest flood over the closure of the tavern. Wet paper will dry out with time. Fallen trees can be restored. But the Calligraphy Tavern is the only source of the magic tonic that sustains all creatures in the forest. Magic what? Magic tonic. It was gifted to the forest by the goddess of creation herself. A special potion that helps us maintain our vitality. Well, our bodies will gradually crumple and become brittle until they eventually disintegrate entirely. Our colors will fade and we'll start to lose our memory until we can't even remember our own names. Uh, but wait, Grandpa Almond, does that mean you've already... Oh, I'm a 
afraid so. The colour has all but completely faded from my paper. To be honest, all I really remember is that I'm supposed to wait here for the hero of prophecy. But I've I've already forgotten who gave me that order to begin with. Then we've got to act fast! How can we help? Oh, brave Pixie. May the goddess of fate reward you and your friend for your kindness. Could it be you're the heroes I've been waiting for all along? Um, not sure how we know that. Plus, we can't even remember how we got here, so it's not looking too promising. Well, uh, this is turning out to be quite the conundrum for old Armand Brain here. <laughs> uh, the prophecy never mentioned anything like that. Uh, for now, why don't you come with me to the Hut of Blessings? The Al Forest Fairy lives there. Maybe she'll know what to do. Whoa, a forest fairy? Like one that knows magic? Oh, you betcha. <laughs> She's prophesied to join the hero on their journey. Well, then, she sounds like exactly the kind of person we need. Please lead the way, Grandpa Almond. Uh, that meadow over there looks pretty strange. Uh, that's what the calligraphy tavern looks like. Now it's lost all of its color. Quit following me. Uh, this is the place. If you could just wait a moment, the fairy should be. Traveler, Paimon! <gasps> Paimon knows that voice! It's really you! I'm so happy to see you! Uh, uh, sorry. Sorry. So Nilu is the forest fairy? Well, you certainly look the part. <laughs> Thank you. But to be honest, I'm still getting used to it. It's the weirdest thing. I remember I was reading a book at the Grand Bazaar, and then I guess I must have fallen asleep at some point because, well, then I woke up dressed like this. And in my dream, someone spoke to me. They said, you are the fairy of the Forest of Blessings. Now go, save the forest with your magic. At first, I thought this whole world was just part of the dream, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't seem to wake up. I couldn't find anyone I knew from the real world either. Sounds similar to what happened with us. We also have no idea how we got here. Anyway, sorry for my reaction back there. I got a bit too excited when I saw you two. It's okay, we totally understand. We were looking for a way out too. At least we know we're not alone. Oh, blessed be the goddess of fate above. You're already friends with the fairy of the forest. Grandpa Almond, thank you so much for bringing my friends here. Could you let the others know I'm coming? I'll head over right away. Uh, of course, leave it to me. Hey ho, pistachio. <laughs> Today truly is a blessed day. Wow, Nilu. Looks like you made short work of getting to know the locals. Well, when I arrived here yesterday, Grandpa Ullman told me all about the state of this world. Since they think of me as their forest fairy, I just felt like I had to try to help them. Oh, so you mean like using some kind of forest magic to repair the tavern? Unfortunately, I don't know how to use the magic of this world. I've tried using my vision, but it doesn't seem to work here. If the books stored in this hut are anything to go by, this seems to be the place where the goddess of creation first made the townspeople of this forest. She folded the pages of books into small origami animals, gave them life with her magic, and with time, that's how the Forest of Blessings took shape. Hmm. 
Maybe one of the books here could teach us how to use magic. I read them all, but only found one reference to magic. The incantation, Abracadabra, means to create what I say. This is a world made up of words, where fantastical powers can be wielded by all. Okay, so basically everyone in this world can use magic? That's nice, but still kind of vague. Yeah, from the other books I read, it seems like this goddess really likes to play fast and loose with the details. So, what should we do now? Um, didn't you say you were going somewhere, Nilu? Oh, yes. I was going to help some of the other residents of the forest. They've been busy making preparations to reopen the tavern, so I thought I could help out. Got it! Guess we should just focus on what we can do for now. This whole thing is making me pretty nervous, actually. It's like I've been pushed on stage without being taught the choreography. Since I'm already wearing the costume, though, I might as well try to play the part. It's what a professional dancer would do. And who knows? Maybe I'll find my own magic along the way. All I can do is try, right? At least you're optimistic! Thank you! Then let's go! is here and she brought her companions grandpa almond was right they do look promising hello there everyone i heard you were working on the piping for the calligraphy tavern is there anything we can do to help oh we wouldn't dream of troubling you with our petty problems my lady don't you worry we have it all under control uh you sure about that because from where paimon's floating the piping is looking pretty chaotic Ah, uh, yes. We have my careless friend to thank for that. He promised we could leave the pipe connecting to him, and... Well, the results speak for themselves. Uh, hey, I just wanted to inspect each pipe. This is the network the Magic Tonic has to flow through. I was just trying to be thorough, so I... <laughs> I disassembled the whole thing. Yeah, and now you've forgotten how to put the thing back together. <sighs> have you been eating too many nuts again? Because you are what you eat. Please don't fight. I know everyone wants the tavern to reopen as soon as possible so that the forest can return to normal. So, why don't you let us help out? Yeah, we're here anyway, so we might as well be helpful. We just need to reassemble these pipes, right? Well, if you're offering... Basically, the pipes need to be connected properly to allow the magic tonic to flow through. If you put the wrong pipe in the wrong place, the tonic will get stuck halfway. Attention to detail is key. Says the guy who messed up the whole thing in the first place. Paimon is starting to get pretty curious about this magic tonic. Um, could she have a teeny tiny sip? Just a little taste, please? It's not greed, it's curiosity. Well, if it's really just one sip, I guess that would be fine. Just be careful. 
This is one of the last cups left in the entire forest. We're supposed to save it for our research. Just a sip. Promise. Okay, here it goes. What was that? Oh, it's stuck in the Paimon's tongue. Uh, wait, is this just regular ink? Wait, does that mean what the legend says is true? The goddess of fate used ink to compose her stories on paper, and the goddess of creation used her power to bring those tales to life. No wonder the tavern is so important to the forest. Maybe the fading disorder occurs when the ink within the body dries up. That would explain why the beings here are forgetting their own stories. Oh. I'm not really sure I can really wrap my head around this conversation, but there's no need to get all worked up on our behalf, my lady. With the pipe installed, I'm sure the tavern will be up and running in no time. Oh, what do you mean, can't wrap your head around it? The fairy is recounting the story of how the goddesses gave us life. In fact, I've seen the goddess of creation with my own eyes. Really? Don't be ridiculous. There's no way you're old enough to have met her. We're the same age, and I think I would know considering we went to tell our wishes to the goddess of fate together. So stop talking a load of paper mache. Oh, fine. It was my grandfather, all right? He was the one that saw her. He said that one day after he finished work, he saw the goddess of creation grant us life with his own eyes. In her hands, she held the very paper used to form our bodies. She whispered something into the pages, and then suddenly a paper frog was born, ready to leap into the world. Oh, it was spectacular. Ah, oh, cut the theatrics, will you? You weren't even there. Wait, so... That's it? Paimon thought creation magic would have a little bit more... pizzazz. Oh, so in your world, the creation of life is a much showier affair? Huh, I'm learning something new every day. Um, well, that's not exactly what Paimon was trying to say. Magic doesn't have to be spectacular. That's enough out of you. All your boasting is confusing our kind fairy. Oh, no, it's all right. I actually think I understand the magic of this world a bit better now. Thank you. The honor was all ours, my lady. Follow me. Squall and Fury. Don't stream! Your rhythm is off again! At this rate, it doesn't even matter if the tavern reopens. The band's not even going to get any gigs! <sighs> I'm sorry. Uh, hello there. I hope we aren't interrupting your rehearsal. Wait, these are the two frogs we saw on the road a little while ago. Oh, the forest fairy is here. For the love of lotus leaves and dewdrop stream, you've really got to put in some effort now. But I... Oh, don't pressure yourselves on my account. Are you rehearsing for a show? Sure are. You see, our group regularly performs for guests at the tavern. We've been out of work for quite some time, with the closure and all, but after hearing of the fairy's arrival yesterday, we figured we needed to get in performance shape right away. <laughs> I understand how you feel. Back at the Grand Bazaar, Zubair Theater's always busy with rehearsals, too. The Grand Bazaar? Do people there sing on lotus leaves as well? Yeah, they do. And it's a really big one. You're the conductor of your group, aren't you? You remind me of Mr. Zubair. Ah, then he must be an ambitious director. One who would do anything to avoid disappointing a single member of the audience. It's just... Hmm. Is there anything we can do to help you, Mr. Stream? 
Oh, no, no. My problems are mine and mine alone. It's just... After the tavern closed, I somehow forgot how to sing. I'm always a few beats behind everyone else, and I keep singing out of key. You were our trump card, our best singer by a mile. I know, I know, but... <sighs> so he is a victim of the fading disorder too? Don't be sad, Mr. Stream. Whenever I've forgotten important dance steps in the past, my friends at the Grand Bazaar always stick by my side to encourage me. They smile and patiently tell me everything's going to be okay. Then they play the melody for me over and over until the steps finally come back to me. Now it's our turn to help you. We just need to help you remember how to sing, right? The Traveler's got a great sense of rhythm. We can help keep you in time. Well, what do you say, Stream? I think it's a great idea. Just focus on the lyrics, and the fairy's friends will help you stay on beat. Are... are you sure? This is really asking a lot. Don't worry about it, Mr. Stream. It'll all be worth it when the tavern reopens, and we finally have the chance to hear your marvelous singing voice. All right, then. Thank you so much, everyone. I I'll give it my best shot. Perfectly in time. Getting the hang of it again. Goddess is above. This better stick when it comes to the performance. Just do it exactly like how we rehearsed. Thank you, everyone. Thanks to you, my voice is once again as clear as a flowing stream. Glad to hear that you're feeling better, Mr. Stream. It's also about time for us to go to our next destination. Mm hmm. We'll be looking forward to your performance at the tavern. Traveler, I'm on. We should make our way to the next location. Squall and Fury! Hup. Oh, my dear Citrus. Please tell me you're joking. We can't have you out of commission with the tavern about to reopen. I'm sorry, Grandpa Almond. It's the truth. I was just too excited for the reopening and must have fallen asleep in an awkward position. Grandpa Almond! We're here to help! Oh, hazelnuts on high. You could not have come at a better time. Uh, please allow me to introduce you. This is the bartender of the Calligraphy Tavern, Miss Citrus. Uh, Miss Citrus is supposed to add all kinds of delicious fruits to the magic tonic. Her additions are what turn it into the finest brew in the land. She's indispensable to the operation of the tavern. I appreciate the kind words, Grandpa Almond, but... Ah, uh, my neck. Are you all right? Ah, uh, terrible timing. Getting a kink in my neck at a time like this? You give my tail a little twist. That should help free up the movement in my neck. I would do it myself, but I can't reach my own, and Grandpa Almond is too old and as light as a feather. The neck and tail are connected? Of course they're connected. Just like how you can't have a rainbow without rain. 
Anyway, you just need to position me at the right height to pick the fruits. And then, put them in the barrel over there. Doesn't seem quite right. Perfect! <sighs> My neck feels much better. So there really is some kind of connection between your neck and tail. Thank you so much, everyone. I can rest easy now, knowing the drinks at the tavern will be just as wonderful as before. That's another problem solved! Behold! Well, since we've taken care of most of the tasks, all we need to do now is reopen the tavern! But we still don't know how to use the magic of this world. We don't even know why the tavern closed in the first place. <sighs> oh! What about the method that one hamster mentioned? You should try it, Nilu! You mean, the creation magic his grandfather saw outside the Hut of Blessings? Hmm, I wonder... How exactly did the Goddess of Creation give them life? Maybe... you don't need to understand it. Just give it a try. Everyone here calls you the Forest Fairy. Maybe you have the magic powers already and you just don't know it. In other words, this forest is a stage. And all I need to do is... step out into the spotlight? <laughs> Sounds just like a fairy tale. Well, we are surrounded by talking origami animals and magic potions after all. Almost seems like anything's possible in this place. You're right, Paimon. We won't know anything unless we try. In that case, let's see. This is how you do it, right? I think I got the folds right. Whoa, your origami skills are great! I once saw one of our prop people making something similar. It looked really cool, so I took some time during my break to learn the basics. It's not a bad way to stave off sleepiness either. Well, how do you feel? Sense any, uh, magical powers flowing through you? Mm. No. No? Mm. What are we missing? Magic words? But... How am I supposed to know what the goddess said to bring them to life? Oh, good point! You're the forest fairy, Nilu! What do you want to say to the new resident of your domain? I bestow upon you the blessings of the forest, and offer you a home in this land. Your name shall be Harisara. May you bloom in this world as beautifully as the flower I love. <sighs> My name is... Harisara. It worked! It actually worked! 
Well, peel my shell and call me a nut. <laughs> I never imagined I'd witness such a miracle at my age. <laughs> it's just like what the story said about the goddess of creation. Shell? Miracle? Nice to meet you, Padisara. I'm Nilu, the fairy of this forest. From this day forward, this place is now your home. Hello, Fairy Nilu. I hope you'll grow up happily in this forest. Grow up. <laughs> oh, you can leave the little one with old Armin for now. Oh, uh, this sure brings back memories. <laughs> it's been such a long time since we last held a welcome ceremony. Here, Padisara. Mm. Uh, come to Grandpa Armand. Well, now that Nilu has mastered the goddess's magic, we should be able to reopen the tavern, right? Hmm. Grandpa Almond, could you send a few people to check the underground space beneath the tavern? Oh, of course. Uh, may I ask why? The moment I used magic, I sensed something strange down there. I have a feeling it's connected to why the tavern had to close down. Uh, of course. We'll look into it right away. Make sure you listen to Grandpa Omen, Potty Sara. Don't go running off on your own. Potty Sara. Listen. Running! Hey, come back here, you! Wait! Yep, that's Nilo's creation, all right! She's got so much energy. Anyway, how did you manage it, Nilu? Well, all I did was say my wishes for her out loud. Maybe the magic is in the words themselves, just like the book said. This place is seeming more like a fairy tale by the second. I mean, or some are called the Forest of Blessings, so it kind of makes sense. Well, anyway, Paimon thinks this magic suits you perfectly, Nilu. When I brought Padisara to life just now, I was able to sense the magic flowing through the forest and the flowers and trees and inside the creatures that live here. But for some reason, there's a hollowed out space beneath the tavern where I couldn't sense anything at all. We're back, my lady. That was fast. You were right. There was something under the tavern that I've never seen before. It looked transparent and gave off a clinking sound when I knocked on it. Transparent and clinking? Oh, I've got it! Uh, already? <laughs> You've got to use fairy tale logic, Paimon. That's right! An empty ink bottle, to be exact. Still remember the taste of the magic tonic you took a sip of, Paimon? Yeah, it was... ink. <gasps> oh, Paimon gets it now! Traveler, Paimon, will you come gather some ingredients with me? I learned what we need to make the magic tonic back in the Hut of Blessings. Sure thing! What do we need to get? Hmm. A setting sun that never sets. A dragon that cannot fly. And... A moon that only shines at night. I... Uh, where are we supposed to find crazy things like that? What? How did you get that so fast? Logic, huh? <laughs> Lucky guess more like. Let's go back to the hut of this. 
cease. Fury. Give me just a second. I'm gonna go fetch an ink bottle from the other room. Paimon doesn't get it. All the ingredients are super tasty, but somehow the final product turns into ink. Well, anyway, Paimon's not going anywhere near this stuff this time. Not even if you bribed her. Sorry to keep you waiting. Let's see. According to the book, first you do this, then this, and then... It's done! Wow! Magic sure makes everything super convenient! Yes, this is it. This is exactly the magic tonic we need. Grandpa Almond, could you take the concoction to the room underneath the tavern and place it next to the transparent bottle you found? I'll handle the rest. Of course. As you command, so it shall be done. <sighs> I still get nervous at times like this. It's just like when you step on stage and you can tell that every single person's gaze is fixed right on you. <laughs> Thanks, you two. I can't tell you how great it is to have you by my side. Almost makes me feel like I've been blessed by the goddess of fate, too. Let's go. We shouldn't keep everyone waiting. Behold! Please heed my words and accept my blessings. May your spring of wondrous magic never run dry. And may all who call you their home lead happy, fulfilling lives. when it suddenly opened up like that. Just like a pop-up book. <sighs> I, I remember now. I remember everything. It was me. I was the one who went to the top of Constellation Metropole and witnessed the goddess's prophecy. The hero who shall save this world will descend upon the Cliff of Prophecy. The hero, supported by their companions, shall restore peace to this world. So the prophecy really did have all the answers, you just forgot the first half! That's why I was waiting near the Cliff of Prophecy. <laughs> wonderful, simply wonderful. 
There's still some hope left for old Armand after all. Is the Cliff of Prophecy that place with the huge mural? Because that is where we woke up, but we don't remember anything about how we got there. Also, we didn't get a change of clothes like Nilu. Are we definitely the heroes? If not you, then who else? Uh, you, you've already helped the fairy revitalize our forest. To us, that makes you heroes. Prophesized or not. All right. Well, either way, we're going to keep adventuring, even if it's just to figure out how we can get back to our world. Yep, that's exactly right. Helping people we meet on the road is kind of our thing. As expected, the words of the goddess of prophecy always come true. I'll come with you. It can't hurt to have a magical fairy tag along, right? Heroes and fairies, dragons and new adventures. <laughs> this is sounding more and more like a fairy tale by the second. Hmm, I would say your next stop should be Constellation Metropole. It's Simi Lanka's most prosperous city, just across the sea. Once you've arrived at the Astral Garden at the highest point in the city, uh, maybe you can try seeking divine counsel from the Goddess of Prophecy herself. Are you leaving, Fairy Nilu? I'm afraid so. There are still other people who need my help. I won't go far, though, and I'll come back to visit the minute I have time to spare. So be a good girl, Putty Sara, and help out Grandpa Alma whenever you can, all right? Mm-hmm. Got it. Putty Sara will wait here for you. <laughs> oh, that's a good girl, Putty Sara. Ah, I almost forgot. If Constellation Metropole is where you're heading, you'll need to take the Maritime Express. I'll head to the station first thing tomorrow morning and wake up that lazy station master for you. Why don't you take a break for the rest of the day? You should savor the beautiful scenery of the forest before you go. Sounds great! Paimon definitely feels tired after being on the go for so long. There's a spot in the tavern with Paimon's name on it. Oh, sounds like someone's ready to order. Oh, well, if you're offering. Paimon will take a glass of Buell fruit tonic. Um, but hold the tonic. <laughs> Thank you.